Hi everybody, this is Victoria. Welcome back to another brand new episode of Discovering Art Together. Today we're going to do something a little bit special because we are going to learn about arm anatomy in Aang's paintings. So this is an exciting new thing that I'm doing because I've been in this mode and um, excitement of learning and sharing anatomy with you guys and we're going to take a look and see how the muscle structure is made in one of Aang's paintings called Oedipus and the Sphinx. And we're going to take a look and see how the male character's arm is structured and constructed by the arm muscles. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. So when it comes to learning anatomy, we want to understand the structure of it and also the placement of the muscles and also the function of each muscle. So that, that way we have a thorough understanding of how everything works together. So I'm going to kind of explain and walk you guys through from taking a look and trying to find the muscles under the skin of this painting by Jean-Auguste Dominic Ank. So let's go ahead and start looking. So as you can see, this is a side view of Ang's painting. And as you notice that there will be some muscles that we can't see because it's on the opposite side of it and it's getting covered up by the muscles that are in the front. So we won't be able to see the whole entire anatomy of the arm because some are kind of hiding though but we're gonna see what we have that's visible to us so let's start with the shoulder muscles and the upper arm muscle so as you can see the top part over here which is like a really huge um kind of like a leaf shaped almost or it should be a raindrop shape that's how the deltoid is more or less shaped so the deltoid is placed at the most top part of the arm and what the deltoid does is that it helps us kind of lift our arms up all the way up and then kind of move it back down so uh the deltoid is actually divided into three main parts there's the front, the medial, and then also the rear muscle. Now, once we move a little bit more to the right, we are going and learn about our rotator cuff muscles. So basically what these muscles do is that they kind of help us swing our arms back and also open up our upper arm so that our wrist and elbow would twist outwards and twist back in. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to see this large muscle that's at the very top, which is called the infraspinatus. And the infraspinatus is probably the larger rotator cuff muscle that's visible to the eye because we do have another one that's a lot smaller, which kind of snugs right above the um, spine of the scapula. And scapula is another fancy name for shoulder blade. And that one is called the supraspinatus. But we don't see that a lot because that one is kind of hiding under and getting covered up by the deltoids. So we don't actually see that here, but he is under there or it is under there. And then right below the infraspinatus is the terrace minor. And also we do have another muscle that we actually don't consider as a rotator cuff it's it's separate muscle but i still want to include this one in it's called the terrace major now the terrace major is actually not part of the rotator cuff muscles because usually we have the supraspinatus which is the one that's hiding under the deltoid and then we have the infraspinatus which is the big one that we see over here and then under that is the terrace minor on the other side of the shoulder blade of the scapula we call that the subscapularis 
and that's in the front part of the shoulder blade, but we don't see it on this perspective of the arm. So now we got most of our shoulder muscles and our somewhat part of the upper arm muscles. We're gonna go down a little bit and then we're gonna take a look at our triceps. So the triceps is usually that muscle that's on the very back. It is a three-headed muscle. So basically it attaches to the shoulder blade and mostly the humerus. So there's two heads that's attached to the humerus, which is the bone for our upper arm. So it's basically this bone here that we have for the upper arm and the triceps are made to kind of do a whole bunch of different motions. The triceps has three main functions. The first one is to actually move our elbow up and down in this direction. And the other thing is to actually move our whole arm up this way so we can move it up and down. And also it would actually help us swing backwards and forwards. So the triceps has many different functions and it's a very helpful and important muscles that we have in our upper arm. So the next muscle that we're going to see here is the biceps. So the biceps brachii to be exact, so that's the actual scientific and anatomical name for it. Biceps brachii is the one that's sitting at the top here. So every time when you see somebody flex and you see this top muscle, so that's what the biceps brachii is. And under the biceps brachii, he has a little friend to help him out, to make him look a little bit more strong and pumped up. That muscle is called the brachialis. And we'll look into another muscle that has a very similar name. We kind of get confused by the two though, but don't worry, this name is a little bit shorter, so just remember the shorter name is the one that's tucked under the biceps brachii. So now we more or less completed our upper arm muscles. So let's go ahead and take a look at the forearm muscles next. So as you can see, the first muscles that we're going to see, or let's kind of categorize these three main categories of muscles for the forearm. So we have uh, the ridge muscles, which is usually that top part, which is on the palm side or on the thumb side. So that's where our ridge muscle is. And it's kind of like a triangular shape for us. It's a group of two muscles together. And then we also have our extenders, which is the muscles at the back side of sometimes backs of the hand, backs of the forearm. And then we also have our flexors, which is on the belly side of your forearm. So we're gonna take a look at the ridge muscles first. So the ridge muscles here is we have at the very top part is the brachioradialis. So that's the one that I was mentioning earlier, which sounds very similar to brachialis, but they are two separate and different muscles. So make sure you don't get confused by those two. So the brachioradialis is on top of our extender carpi radialis longus. And those two are basically our main ridge muscles over here. The other muscles that are next to it. So the next muscles that we see over here are most of our extensor muscles. So first we have the extensor digitorum, which is the one that basically moves our fingers. So that's how our fingers move. And then you can also flex your wrist backwards that way. And we also have these two smaller extensors, which is called the extensor pollicis brevis, which is basically two muscles that kind of stretch out and extend, um, but it actually doesn't extend all the way to the thumb, though we do have these two tendons. And then if you kind of try to uh, pop it, we have this hollow area. So you can see the two tendons kind of coming in over here. And then that's called like the snuff box because uh, Back in the days, um, people would put like trucks in there and they would just sniff it. But uh, but yeah, so you can kind of play around and look in your own hand and just kind of see that there's this little socket over here. I don't know if you guys see it in the camera though, but somewhere over there. That's pretty much the main ones that we see visible to our hand or our forearm in this painting. And then definitely we also have this hand muscles, which is the first dorsal 
interosseus, which is this big chubby part, um, this thumb area that's on the back side, or what we call the dorsal side of the thumb. And that is all the muscles that we see in this particular painting. If you guys want to know a little bit more about anatomy, I'm actually going to release a brand new anatomy tutorial and course. And I hope you guys can kind of learn anatomy in somewhat an easy way and a more helpful approach. I'll try to take it down into a step-by-step -step process because I created this mainly to help my students to learn anatomy for those who have never touched um, any type of uh, anatomy knowledge and never really learned anatomy and don't know where to start. So this course is specifically for you guys if you want to get a better understanding of anatomy. And um, yeah, and that is all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed trying to find the muscles and the placements and also the functions of the muscles in Aang's painting of Oedipus and the Sphinx. So feel free to check out more paintings like this and try to see if you can actually find and um, differentiate the different muscles and which part is which because sometimes it's a little bit harder to see mostly when we have the muscles under the skin and the skin kind of smooth things out a lot so we don't see it as clearly as we do if we were to rip the skin off and seeing the muscles under it so yeah Okay, and that's it for today. Thank you again so much for watching this brand new episode, and I hope you enjoyed this mini anatomy lessons from a old master's painting. And here is a mini exercise for you guys. I want you guys to try and draw the arm. So drawing anatomy is very important and very helpful to help you learn and understand the anatomy and also where each muscle is placed. So sometimes when you're learning anatomy, it's not enough to just read through books and just kind of look at it. Drawing really helps incorporate and kind of enhances your knowledge of actually knowing what muscle is where and what it does. And you can also color code it too. It's going to be a super fun way of learning anatomy. You can make it nice and fun, nice and pretty as well. And just learn at your own pace because there's no rush in learning anatomy and also the names can be really complicated so i would usually recommend trying to watch some medical videos of how they explain and pronounce the names because people pronounce it in very different ways too i've seen people pronounce um for example triceps brachi as in triceps brachii so I don't think the pronunciation really matters that much though, but what really matters is to know the muscle, understand where it's placed, and also the function. I would say function is the most important thing because that's the one that helped me remember the most because I see this muscle, it's like, oh yeah, this thing helps us lift our arm up and so forth, right? So that's pretty cool to understand how our body works and it's cool. Anatomy is cool. Okay, and I shall see you guys in the next episode, but take care, stay creative, have fun, and enjoy your anatomy studies. I'll be studying together with you guys, so don't worry, and I'm looking forward to release the new art tutorials of anatomy very soon. So until then, take care, have a wonderful week, have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next time. Take care, stay creative, bye!